Thank you very much, uh, Chairwoman Kaptur and Ranking Member Simpson and members of this subcommittee. Thank you for the opportunity to testify today on the importance of federal investments to meet Arizona's water resource needs. The Colorado River Basin is experienced the driest conditions in more than 1,200 years. An increasing loss of snowpack in the Rocky Mountains has led to plummeting water levels at Lake Powell. As a result, hydropower generation at Glen Canyon Dam is under serious threat. Lake Mead water levels are also at historic lows. Arizona's future and the future of the American Southwest depends on how we respond to this mega drought. We're moving in the right direction, but there is so much more work that needs to be done. The current tier one shortage has substantially cut Arizona's share of Colorado River water. It's reduced Central Arizona projects normal supply by 30% and Arizona's total Colorado River allocation by almost 20%. In addition to these cuts, Arizona is doing even more under the 500 plus plan, voluntarily cutting more than 200,000 acre feet this year alone. I appreciate this subcommittee's past support for directing resources to help us implement the drought contingency plan. This is an important step. In fact, it's an essential step, but it is not enough to meet additional shortages that we face in Arizona. Arizona's tribal nations and rural communities need help, and we must make direct investments to support their drinking water and wastewater infrastructure. Two years ago, the Water Resources Development Act included my legislation to add Arizona to the Section 595 Environmental Infrastructure Program to make these investments. With your help, it was approved, and in the time since, more Arizona communities are getting the help they need to better protect their water supply. New water lines for the city of Maricopa and the Pasco Yaqui tribe, infrastructure that helps Yavapai Apache Nation better manage their reclaimed water, mitigating flood risk in the city of Flagstaff, restoring the Queen Creek in the town of Superior, the list goes on. And I appreciate this subcommittee support for this authority this fiscal year, and I ask that you continue strong funding in the future. Although Arizona is a dry climate, when it does rain, it can rain a great deal, and we often experience danger, dangerous flash floods. There are several projects we can support to safeguard against these floods. The Trace Rios and Rio Salado Oeste ecosystem restoration projects are part of, are part of Rio Reimagine, a federal urban waters partnership project. These projects would improve the river channel through Phoenix, better manage flood risk, as well as help remove invasive species such as the salt cedar trees, which consume large amounts of water. I hope that the subcommittee will continue to support these important projects. Second, the Cave Buttes Dam in, the Maricopa, in Maricopa County provides flood protection for more than a million people in the Phoenix metro area and $15 billion in residential and commercial property. Seepage in the dam has sounded the alarm for us to reduce the risk of its failure. Similarly, thousands of residents and hundreds of critical facilities, including Luke Air Force Base, depend on the Agua Fria River, Trilby Wash, or the McMicken Dam for flood protection. But because of the dam's safety deficiencies, land subsidence, and urbanization, its level of protection is questionable at best. We must begin new feasibility studies for both Cave Buttes Dam and McMicken Dam so the Corps can evaluate flood risk management needs and safety modifications. And finally, I, re I request increased funds for the sections 205 and 206 under the Continuing Authorities Program which is currently overextended and underfunded. Arizona has several critical projects seeking to utilize this program. Thank you for the opportunity to testify today, and thank you for your support of our nation's water infrastructure. I yield back.